looking at our canvas, we're going to refresh. And we have a problem. The canvas adapter. Oh, sorry, you didn't see that. But um, I refreshed, and now the screen's blank. And if we look at our, can we collapse this? Let's, mm, can we? OK, well, you can see there's a problem, right? And I see it's with the canvas adapter being null in the do mapping function. So I want to figure out why that is. Yeah, we know where the do mapping function is being called. Um, but why is it? Control F, look for do mapping. Oh, sorry, you can't see my screen, but hold on. OK, do mapping. So the canvas adapter, oh, it's the canvas adapter. Uh, so global data, dot, OK. Um, so what I'm concerned about here is I'm pretty sure I took the canvas adapter off of global data, and I put it into global objects. So the air should be getting thrown right about here, but instead it's being thrown inside of this function because the um, because there's nothing here. Uh, it's probably like undefined because I'm it's creating the canvas adapter property on the fly, which we don't want. Um, like I like that JavaScript is flexible and that helps quickly prototype, but sometimes you gotta like. Um, you have to crack down on that flexibility of it. And I think I know why. I think in main I need to use strict. So I'll add use strict there. And while we're at it, we might as well go over here and use strict. Uh, sorry, let me. So use strict. And basically I am fairly certain that the error should be happening uh, right here on line 288 and not within the do mapping function. So I'm just adding those use stricts so that the error gets caught where I think it should be getting caught. And console. OK, well, let me put a breakpoint there. So canvas adapter is undefined as I expected. And my use strict did not catch anything with that global data object. So let me go up here and look at global data for a second. And I don't see. So I did object.seal on the global data object. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that um, this object.seal somehow does not apply after I return it. That's just my guess. Um, that's the only explanation I have. So I'll go over to global data. And yeah, I mean, that's the only explanation I have for why it's just letting me do that. Um, so we're going to do object.seal object.seal on that global data object because we don't want to add we don't want to the properties that are already on the global data object are the properties that um, we've kind of already defined the structure of global data in this init function and we don't want to be adding anything else on the fly let's take a look uh, refresh the screen empty cache hard reload and okay, that's just kind of infuriating. Okay, I'm gonna full screen my debugger. I'm gonna go back to main. And no, so canvas adapter is undefined. I'm going to put a breakpoint up here. I'm gonna refresh so this empty cache hard reload. <clears throat> We're going to inspect this global data object. Um, so what I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, what I don't see here is I don't see any reference to this uh, canvas adapter. 
globaldata.canvas adapter. So if we look in here, uh, there's no canvas adapter. So when this line here gets executed, it's just adding on this property on the fly, which I don't get why that's happening because I put use strict up here and I like sealed the object like twice. Let's uh, just go in there. Okay, so now let's look at the global data object and Huh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that maybe JavaScript when you seal an object, it just doesn't let you add a property, but um, it doesn't let you add a property, but um, it doesn't. It looks like it doesn't stop you from accessing a property that doesn't exist, or at least in uh, the V8 engine. Because I'm using I'm using Chrome. Uh, that's that's the best explanation I have for why that's happening. I used to write JavaScript where I would like write a whole bunch of getters and setters for like each and every single property, so that way I didn't accidentally do something like this. Um, yeah, that's definitely what happened because um, because this adapter is undefined. We accessed this property here. But when we look at it here, it, it doesn't um, exist. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try a little uh, a little weird thing. I, let's just give it a shot. Uh, so in my code here, it's this canvas adapter here. We could try. Um, equals. Okay, so this is just... Okay, so this looks kind of weird. So I'm going to take globaldata.canvasadapter and set it equal to globaldata.canvasadapter. And the idea here is that um, because we've sealed these classes, I shouldn't be able to access a property that does... I shouldn't be able to add this property on the fly. It looks like I can access it, but I shouldn't be able to add it. So if I write it like this, and also the expression um, in a in um, I think I'm gonna have to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that in JavaScript, an expression like this, an assignment. Yeah, it's an assignment, not a comparison. Because this is an assignment, right? So I used a single equal. Because I use a single equal and it's an assignment, the result of this expression should be um, the result of whatever got assigned, right? So the result of this entire expression should be the canvas adapter. Um, but it, this expression should also blow up on us because we're using we're using strict up here. Um, and so I'm just writing this in a very hackish way to try to um, get the uh, debugger to um, complain on this line rather than later. So let's uh, let's try that out and see what happens. So now we're over here. Let's uh, refresh. Empty cache, hard reload. And we're expecting a problem on line 229. So let's play this. Okay, so we got underlines. Uh, let's look at the console. So we got uncaught type error. Cannot add property. Canvas adapter. Object is not extensible. And that's because we sealed the object. So I'm pretty sure that that's the, that should be the solution we want. I'm not not quite happy that we had to write it that way, but um, JavaScript is weird. What can I say? <sighs> Okay, so let's go over here. And now that that error got triggered, uh, and we know why, it's because uh, this canvas adapter is actually in the uh, global objects. Let's uh, do this. So we have the global data, and then we have global functions, and we'll have to make a stub function for uh, global uh
and then global objects. It, okay, so we got our global data, our global functions, and our global objects. Um, so we might not need to use these seals, like that might be redundant. Um, now that I've figured out the source of the problem, we'll just leave those in for now. Um, it doesn't hurt anything, and it does kind of help communicate the message right here that we don't want to extend these objects. So data, functions, and objects. And they're top level, so we don't put the var keyword in front of these because these are file scope or global scope, whatever you want to call it. And here's where they're declared, global data. And then right here in the middle here, we're going to have a function init global uh, function. Right? And when I say init global function, I mean init global function container. Um, you know, maybe that's bad wording, but it's just I'm trying to keep um, the same um, uh, order of words in related functions. Um, so sometimes the grammar of my functions isn't proper English because I want... I'm going to break... Um, um, I'm going to violate lots of rules of English just to make the code more regular. Because English is not a regular language, but programming is a regular language where everything is completely regular and consistent. Um, so I want to... If I'm going to violate a programming rule or a English rule, it's going to be an English rule because we're writing code, and the code is... Like, I do like comments and whatnot, but the code is more important than the English of how it's written, if that makes sense. Okay, so we have init global function and var global functions container, and it's just going to be empty. There's going to be nothing in there. And we'll just do object.seal, the global function container, and then return, and we'll have, we'll write it like that again. Um, So you don't really need a global function container like this because functions are hoisted. Um, however, if we're writing a library that might have to play nice with other uh, library code, uh, this acts to like namespace it. Um, so maybe like um, we could either so we could do something like this. So like global function dot. Uh, my function equals uh, my library namespace. So sometimes it can be kind of annoying to like reference something like that all the time. So we could do it like this. We have basically our global function container is kind of like a namespace object. And then we'll just say my function and then the fully qualified function name here. And this function would be something that gets hoisted to the top of the file through uh, JavaScript's function hoisting mechanism. Um, uh, so f let's not get into function hoisting. Uh, you can look that up if you want. Um, but basically it means that the JavaScript doesn't quote unquote compile in the order that it's written in and that functions get like a special priority where they're uh, moved above everything, including variables, which is kind of weird because like uh, when I write C code, I make an effort to make sure that the variables and the data come before the functions. And then in JavaScript, it, they kind of like turn that on its head. OK, so we got our global function container, init global function here. Uh, we should keep the same uh, commenting structure, even though there's nothing in here. So it's going to be a GF for global function. And then GF and explain what that abbreviation stands for. So global function. And then below. Uh, 
And then same thing as, and we could probably remove that extra space. Um, hold on. Okay. Okay, so that way we got this sectioned off. And now we can fix the problem. So what I'm assuming here is because of the way I wrote this, that when we put the correct container, which is the global objects, <clears throat> I mean, there's still, a, I mean, it's not going to catch everything, right? Because I guess if we did this and we forgot to change this as well, then we'd still have a problem on our hands, right? Um, but let's test that out, just see if that works, right? Let's fix it first, and then I'm probably... Then I'm probably just gonna get get rid of this weird syntax, because... You know, you, in the end, you just gotta have human eyes on stuff to figure out where the problems are. It's, it's the halting problem, right? No matter how much code you write to check for an error, then you gotta check the error code, checking code for an error, and then you gotta check the error code, error checking, uh, co right? It just keeps on piling on top of each other. You know, who watches the watchers, right? Um, <clears throat> so in the end, it's really gonna be up to the human that's looking at the code to figure out if everything looks correct. So, um, but let's make sure that runs first before we, uh, before we refactor that. Um, so we already know what line it was. Let's uh, go over here. I'm going to run this up to here. And the canvas adapter. OK, it has everything I expect. So that worked. So this weirdness, like I said, the result of this assignment is the canvas adapter, right? So when you assign something, um, the last assi assignment, or, um, so it's an assignment statement, right? So this gets assigned to whatever's over here. And the result of this entire, hold on, the result of this entire expression, assignment expression, is whatever is on the right side here. And that's why we can write this weirdness and it works. But, um, but that's weird and and it's still error prone, right? Because if we accidentally change global object here to global data, we're still gonna end up with a problem. And now we have a problem and weird code. And you know, if we're gonna have to choose between a problem and weird code or just a problem and normal looking code, I think we should probably choose a problem and normal looking code. So we are gonna change this back to making it look normal. But first, we're gonna you know make sure that everything is properly functioning, right? We're because we're still kind of in the middle of refactoring, and oh, looks like maybe we're done refactoring. Uh, let's look at the console. So we have a undefined uh, cx uh, global event dot cx. So let's uh, put some breakpoints there and refresh. And why is Oh, right, because it's an event on the canvas. I got to click. <sighs> OK, undefined. So the actual global event, and it is global data, global event. Did I move that to the wrong container? Might have. Let's take a look at our code really quick. Uh, the global event. Is, is a plain old data object. It's a, so global event object. Oh, I'm calling it object, so maybe that's why. Um, maybe I should just call it a struct. Um, yeah, okay, okay. So, right, my def, that's why object is such a horrible word because it's, it has so many overloaded meanings. So I have new global event object and it's right here. But really, this should be in the global data because this object does not have any functions, and I did not, I don't intend for it to ever have. I don't intend for this 
a global event object to ever have functions. So I should probably just stop using the word object in my code. It's probably what I should do um, because this is leading to problems. So really quick, we're going to take um, global event object and I'm going to make a note in my, uh, I'm going to make a note really quick. Uh, in my uh, my shortcuts here, uh, use so I'm just making I'm making a note that. Object is kind of a ambiguous word, and so we're gonna call it global event struct. And you know, JavaScript doesn't have structs, but you know what? JavaScript doesn't have classes either. Well, I guess it has objects, but it does not have classes and it does not have structs. But we're gonna name it based on the intention of how it's supposed to be used. So global event struct. Just gonna put that there, and uh, my shortcuts need some reloading. Okay, so I don't want to go over my time, so I'm gonna start recording another video.